The judicial panel of inquiry set up by the Lagos State Government to investigate cases of police brutality and the Lekki Tollgate shooting on Tuesday received the CCTV evidence from the Lekki Concession Company. Abayomi Omomua, the managing director of the LCC, the company in charge of the Lekki Tollgate, presented the CCTV footage and other documents to the judicial panel. Among other things, Mr. Momoa said the CCTV footage at the uh, Lekito Gate stopped working at about 8 p.m. on October 20th and, of course, could not have captured any events, including the shootings that happened after that time on that day. Plus, TV Africa's Aneta Felix was at that hearing on that day, and here's her report. No, no, sit down! Let's just sit say. down! Sit down! Sit down where you are! Many remember the 20th of October 2020 as a dark day in Nigeria's history. On that day, unknown gunmen in army uniform allegedly shot at protesters guarded at the Lekito Gate. The Nigerian army initially described the viral videos as fake news, but later backtracked after 81 Division confirmed that army officers were invited by the Lagos state government to quell the tension, but did not shoot at the protesters. Amnesty International has continued to insist that 12 people died. To probe the events of that night, the Lagos state government set up this eight-man panel. Members are tasked to investigate the lucky shootings of October 20th and address the grievances of victims of abuses by members of the disbanded Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SARS. After hearing the testimony of victims of SARS abuses, the managing director of the Lekki Concession Company, LCC, Abayomi Omomua, is called up to answer questions about the alleged removal of cameras at the toll before the shootings. We never, ever tamper with that surveillance camera. And as you probably will see in the footage, that's why the footage, you can still get the footage. It remained there until about some, some time later in the day, around 8 o'clock, when it was tampered with and we couldn't get any, any network anymore. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> what I mean is that we are talking about recording and footage. We will come to Monday and we will come to Monday. We will come to I am talking about the physical camera, as we saw it that day, is still there. But around and after it o'clock, we stop recording. Ah, okay. The LCC Council also asked Abayomi why the power was cut during the shootings. He said this in response. Consequent upon the declaration of the coffee, and we got information, and as the responsible company that cares for the safety of our staff, we also issued a communication that everybody should comply with an announcement. So we sent communication out to all staff to go. And everybody left. So, including those that were supposed to be in charge of the generator. Some legal practitioners, however, expressed their displeasure with the questioning process of the LCCMD. The Council for Legal State Government was asking questions as if it was a council for LCC and there was nobody to question, to cross-examine him in favor of the petitioners. The panel members also didn't ask any questions. Today, the way I see it, so in the case of LCC, panel just sit down, they look and soak in all the answers. I would have expected a more muscular response from the from
from, from, from the panel. Today's hearing on SARS-related abuses lasted for almost four hours. During the hearing, the managing director of the Lekki Concession Center, Abayomi Omomowa, presented a camera surveillance footage of the events of Tuesday, October 20th, 2020, now referred to allegedly as the Lekki Togate shootings or massacre. Now, the court has adjourned hearing to November 6th, that's Friday this week, because they say they do not have the facilities to examine the camera footage. Aneta Felix, Plus TV Africa. Thank you very much, Anetha, for that report. Now, to help us discuss this and understand some of the developments uh, from the panel of inquiry, we're joined by Dan Ekere from the Department of Philosophy, University of Lagos, and Jumoke Olawode James, a social commentator. Thank you both for joining us on The Breakfast this morning. Good to see you. I uh, will start with uh, uh, Mr. Dr. Ekere. I'll start with you. Um, I'll, I'll just ask, what, what is, what was your, okay, I understand we don't have uh, the doctor right now, so I will start with uh, Jumoke. Uh, could you tell us your immediate reaction to um, the reports uh, given by the LCC uh, chairman, that's the MD, uh, Mr. Bayomi Momua? And the reactions as contained in that report. Did you were you able to see the report? Yeah. <clears throat> Excellent morning. And from the very beginning of um, this panel, I've had reservations in terms of it, it seems like the Lagos State government, the accused or co-accused, because we haven't been told who invited the army to the Lekki Gate on the 20th of you know um, October. And so they've set up a panel. They seem like they're a judge in their own case, which is why the panel, rather than um, ask probing questions, you know, are sitting listening to the LCC MD tell us that recording stopped at 8 o'clock. Now, when they were accused of taking our cameras on the evening of 20th of October, the governor at the time said, no, we still have the cameras and the recordings of that day. And all of a sudden, at the panel put together by the government to probe, you know, these abuses, we are hearing that the cameras stopped recording at 8 o'clock. Now, eyewitnesses said that the shooting started at 6.45. I'm hoping that these cameras are able to give us some information of what happened from 6.45 p.m. that evening till 8 p.m. when the cameras stopped shooting. Um, there were also some eyewitnesses accounts saying that the military men, because the Attorney General has now told us that they were hoodlums in military uniform, whoever it was that was in military uniform, shot also at the cameras, um, probably to damage evidence, you know, of what took place. But from the very beginning, as I said, I, I haven't been very comfortable with the panel. Why? It ought to be an independent inquiry into what happened. If we're accusing the state government of, you know, having the knowledge of what happened in terms of they, they were accused by the army of inviting them. So if they're, you know, called accused, they shouldn't be the ones setting up this panel. So from the beginning, I haven't been very interested in it. I think it's a uh, rigmarole, you know, give us something to talk about for the next six months to one year by which time a lot of people may have forgotten you know what happened all right um Jumoka, still with you i i, I some of the uh, points that you've made are pretty interesting and that is the trust in the panel to totally investigate and ask probing questions and unveil the truth that nigerians seek in this matter um what is the relevance then of the representative, the youth representatives, uh, there are two of them there. Uh, I think there's also a few personalities that aren't from the government that are there. Um, do you have any faith, you know, left that these, you know, the panel itself will, will be able to ask these very, very vital questions? Because it almost seems like a, you know, it doesn't seem like an investigation. It feels like a question and answer session. So do you have any faith that those other persons that are seated on the panel should be able to ask these probing questions? Or are they just, you know, alive and present? <laughs> Fantastic question. Now, um, 
one of the panelists, Reno, was at the forefront of the protest. So, you know, lots of young people, because of her passion for the protest, a lot of young people trust that she's going to do what she needs to do. And I hear that one of them is also a lawyer. So they have some legal knowledge of what they ought to be doing on that panel. Um, but from the very beginning, first, we were cautious when we saw that. They were, in the constitution of the panel, we're trying to um, make them sign non-disclosure agreements, sort of an oath of secrecy, you know, that made us a little cautious. What is this? And then the first sitting, um, the two young panelists were also very quiet. I guess so they don't seem like antagonists or you're not allowing this panel. They're sort of just observing what is happening. I hear also that um, they're supposed to have the support of some legal luminary to help them really understand what they ought to be doing. You're not just supposed to be there to observe. You're supposed to ask questions that if the other six or eight panelists aren't asking because they're from the government side, you know, you who was on the forefront, who was harassed by police, you know, when the, panel, uh, when the protest started, you should be the one asking some questions. Again, yesterday's panel, um, adjourned till tomorrow. The uh, again, they're human beings. I don't expect them to work like machines, you know. But you know, adjourning. There was a panel that happened on third um, of November. It was adjourned till the thirteenth of November. You know, all this adjournment. It seems like it, you know how they okay. say that um, okay. justice delayed, justice denied. Jumoke, yeah. you've, you've, from the onset, you've expressed your lack of enthusiasm with the setting up of this panel. Um, a question will be too prone. The first is, what alternative would work better for you, the constitution or the constitution of a panel? What would work better for you, uh, for the government to explore? And then on the second part, what worries you the most about the seeming lack of specifics when it comes to uh, the timing of the um, stopping of the uh, CCTV cameras and the seeming lack of uh, penetrative questions uh, you also alluded to earlier from the yeah. um, uh, panel members expressed okay. also by the uh, participants there in that report. Okay, so to, first question. Um, out of what an independent panel should have been raised by the courts, maybe not the government. Because if the government is accused of inviting the army, then they setting up a panel, like I mentioned before, is being judges in their own courts. So maybe you want to have two government representatives on the panel, but the panel itself is raised by lawyers, by the judiciary. Because, I mean, the judiciary is the third realm. You know, they're supposed to help us in a democracy. So it, we... We have a lot of lawyers on the panel, I agree. But the fact that it was the Lagos state government that put it together is why I had a problem with it. It should have come from the courts, not the government, not the executive themselves. It should have been a panel put together by the judiciary. Now, talking well, about... Well, um, sorry to interject. Sorry to interject. Um, if, if, even if the panel is to be constituted, at what instance should it come? Because he is the first person in this state. He is the number one citizen, so to speak. And... The uh, the bolt stops um, on his desk. So shouldn't it be him that will still invite the judiciary to come up? Do you have a problem with the fact that he is the one that nominated the um, head of that panel, or the fact that he um, he didn't designate it to uh, the lawyers? Exactly, that's my problem. Now, as the number one citizen of the state, yes. Is taking the initiative, being proactive in saying that we need a um, panel of inquiry to find out what really happened. And now the, the terms of engagement of this panel is actually very wide. Supposed to um, find out abuses of the special anti-robbery squad. Now that's a lot in, in opposition to what has happened in October, which is during the NSAS protest itself. So you have lumped them up. In fact, the entire protest wasn't part of the inquiry. 
you know, initially. It was after the shootings happened that they said, oh, okay, let us also look into that. You know, now, if you as the number one citizen said, okay, let us have this um, panel of inquiry, then you should have been telling the, you know, chief justice of Lagos State, the um, commissioner of, you know, um, of justice. justice in Lagos State, the attorney general of Lagos State, and asking them to set up an independent panel. That's assuming that they're independent of the executive, if you understand what I mean. Yes, we do. Then they can then call everybody, you know, and bring them together on the panel and say, oh, we want representatives of the government to come and defend the accusations. We want representatives of the police, SARS themselves. We want representatives of the NSAS protesters. We want everybody to come into this. So it is fair from All the right, beginning. Uh, Jumoke, if Not you could just speak on the second part of the question, because I understand uh, we have our second guest uh, waiting. So you just speak on that part so we can bring him in. So the second part of the um, question is about the duration, you know, of um, this panel of inquiry. I, I wasn't expecting it to, if it is about SARS, I mean, SARS brutality. The has specifics been of the many, many uh, details so of, many... um, uh, it's actually about the specifics of the, um, the timeline, about no. the lack of specifics for the, um, the CCTV camera, we don't have the time frame. All he did was say that around 8 p.m., that lack of specifics and the non-pursuance of details by the panel members. Now, the, the CCTV camera, if it has been on for all the years that it has always been on, and you say to us that it stopped at 8 o'clock, like I mentioned before, if, if eyewitnesses said that the shooting started around 6.45, it therefore means that at least we should have an hour at the very least of what happened there, if you understand what I mean. So we would like to know what happened within that hour, where the shooting started and 8 p.m. when it stopped recording. Also, the, the lack of specificity in the questioning of the panel members also worries me because you had two um, two witnesses say that they were just sitting down watching what the LCC MD was saying at the panel. If you are there to inquire, you're not there just to listen to him. You're supposed to be asking, oh, okay, who put down the cameras? The cameras that we heard were removed, and you said they weren't CCTV cameras. What cameras were those? Because I hear they were infrared cameras that would have been able to even record in the dark. Who asked you to pull down those cameras? Why did you, you know, not just, you know, okay. sit back and listen to him tell right. you what he was um, doing? Hold on, Jamoke. I, I want us to bring in uh, Dan Nekere uh, from the Department of Philosophy, University of uh, Lagos. Uh, thank you for joining us, um, Zachary. Thank you, thank you. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've been following, you know, our conversation so far. Um, one of the things that we've spoken mostly about is the lack of probing questions uh, um, from the panel of inquiry to the LCCMD. Um, so I want you to go on with that, you know, but I'm going to bring in um, other details here. And that is with the... Um, when we when we hear that the cameras stop working, um, do we expect to go further uh, to present the cameras to the to the panel? Do we expect that the LCC uh, um, MD will be asked to present the cameras, and of course, a forensic investigation will be carried out on why it stopped working, um, what did it capture before it stopped working, and all of that? Do we expect the panel to go for, um, as far as that? And then also. There is surrounding buildings. There is a hotel right next to where that incident took place. There are residential buildings around where that incident took place. There's um, an Instagram live video uh, that went on all through that period. Um, do you expect that those uh, things to be, will be brought into this investigation or will they be ignored? Truly, there are a lot of challenges with it. Now, to say that the CCTV camera stopped working around 8 shows that they are not speaking about the camera. Said, we got a, the camera records time. 
I'm always worried what people say about around, tell us the specific. It stopped working 8 o'clock. It stopped working 10 minutes past 8. We will be very sure. Now, I recall that on that day, on Narai TV, a man like Professor Patu told me was on air talking about the shooting. And I recall that the man who was interrogating him or interviewing him said, at about what time did this happen? And he said it was around 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. So if the camera actually stopped working at 8, what then happened? Did they not capture all these things? Because the shooting from the record started around 7. So if it is about 7 o'clock they started and you put off your camera at 8, obviously it would have recorded you know, those uh, uh, activities that took place between 7 and 8. But in any case, let's look at it this way. If the LCCI uh, uh, MD is saying that the camera stopped working at 8 and as such he did capture any of those things, so what exactly was he expecting that the camera was going to do to the panel? Was it just to show them that the camera was not working or he has something else to explain about that? Has the camera ever stopped working? Because so this is something that works 24 hours. Uh, these are They've been collecting tools the... from time uh, to time. How uh, come it was around this time it is stopped working? So I expected very tough questioning, serious quizzing from the panelists. Yes. So, yeah. so go on and also speak about the surrounding buildings. The hotel, a very big hotel, which is right next to where that happened, must have security cameras. Do you expect that a panel of inquiry that is truly seeking the truth will call that, of course, call for the uh, CCTV footage from those hotels and those surrounding buildings. The Instagram fact, live they... feed also that has, of course, was very viral that day. Do you expect that that would also be, be put into this investigation? It is to expand the scope wide enough to embrace everything that can reveal what transpired that day. Because I recall that I was watching it live. And things were happening. We saw men in uniform shooting. We saw people shouting. In fact, there was one that said a bullet went just... The man even thought that it is chopped off part of his head. You know, the other one said the man next to him was brought down and he died there. You know, different accounts. This is were happening live. So everything in that neighborhood that will reveal what transpired must be brought to bear. It can't just be about CCTV. And in any case, who has been in custody of that camera since that day? Right, who is presenting it? I wish it's not an interested party. You know, so, so many things are there. So you must ensure that you expand the scope in such a manner that you encompass everything around the neighborhood that will reveal or properly get to the bottom of what we are looking for. If truly the search is about finding out what transpired and exact thing that transpired. So I, I expect that yeah, both the, the hotels, the residential building, those uh, so, uh, social network programs and the rest that are in the neighborhood, everything that can reveal what took place must be brought to bear. That is the only way you get to the bottom of what you are really looking for. Otherwise, it will just be one of those mere ceremonial activities uh, that will happen just to show that, yes, we set up a panel. At the end of the day, the panel will not have anything to give us. Um, that Dr. is not Akira, what we are looking at. Let me, let me ask you this. Um, moving away, about, uh, away a bit from gathering all um, evidence to help with the case, uh, let, let's talk about the evidence that is in our hands at the moment, and that's the CCTV uh, camera recording that was submitted by the LCCMD to the panel. Now, the, the question I want to ask is, what worries you about the postponement of the viewing date when the, they knew that that will be presented on, that was yes, day before yesterday, that that uh, footage will be presented on that day. Couldn't they have watched it so as to show sincerity and seriousness as to investigate? Because and even they adjourned it to an indefinite time at a date to be announced subsequently. Part of the things that are making this probe look somehow suspicious. You see, because if we had actually taken all this into consideration, the moment this thing happened, a proper account of it should have been done, that what was recorded would have been played. Because don't forget that these are things that are, you know, manipulable. You know, they can be manipulated. They are things that can be doctored. All right? So 
if truly we wanted this thing to stand as an evidence, I expected that it should have been played immediately, not on uh, postponing. What does it take to actually look at it, to watch the something? What does it take? Why will you postpone? Why will you put it on hold? You know, so now presenting it much later, we raise doubt. If you want people to believe in what you are doing, if you want a process to be transparent, you must follow a transparent road. So, so far, this has not been observed. And this, whatever is going to come out of this, there will be a little change of suspicion whether we actually we're actually sincere about trying to unravel what transpired and to bring to justice whoever or whatever party that is culpable right. that seems not to be what is going on at the moment as a matter of fact when this panel was established hopes were very high considering essentially the the the, the way the governor came into the scene where the protest just started you know, but at the level of the lucky shooting and the rest put a lot of a lot of question mark on all the things that are happening now. All right, I'm going to go back to Juboke now, and I want to you know move us in a, in a different direction. Uh, some of the things that have happened in the last few days, and uh, of course, uh, for example, there's uh, uh, a talk uh, of um, certain bank accounts being frozen. Uh, people who were somehow, some way, you know, uh, uh, participants in the uh, protests, lawyers, health uh, professionals, and, and the likes. There's also um, Mudukbe, I believe, whose international passport was taken and she was stopped from traveling. These are um, things that have happened the last few days. How does this affect the trust in the uh, process? Um, how does this affect also the, the, when the government says that it is truly committed to truth and justice um, for victims of uh, SARS brutality? So um, the frozen bank accounts seem like a directive from um, the federal government, right? And this, the Lagos State panel is by the Lagos State government. Even though it was the federal government who asked all state governors to set up panels to look into SARS brutality and allegations of human rights violations by them. And then the passport being seized um, at the airport. Mudukwe has said um, she has given half information. Maybe she's a little unsure of what's happening right now. She hasn't told us who stopped her at the airport. She didn't also mention whose office she went back to because she said she had to go back with her lawyers. You know, she mentioned that they haven't told her what she has done and why she was stopped from traveling. They only said to her that she's under investigation there are allegations out there that there's a watch list you know of a few people and so if you were actively involved in the protest if you're outside the country don't come back home for now if you're inside the country don't try to travel and while we were still deliberating over those allegations we hear that accounts that have been frozen since the 25th of october are still frozen particularly from a particular bank you know now, for a federal government who said, we have disbanded SARS, we're listening to you. Let's come to a negotiating table. Tell us who your leaders are so we can have a conversation with them. And then order that state government set up panels to investigate all the allegations to also be doing this. Then, like I mentioned, you know, I wasn't joyous about the panel's um, constitution in the first instance and the happenings after that have sort of confirmed that the government isn't really sincere. The exact things we're complaining about, you know, human rights violations. If you don't tell me why, you know, you are investigating me, don't stop me from traveling. Don't block my account if, you know, I haven't done anything criminal. So those are violations of people's human rights. So if the government is now actively doing this, when the NSAS protests were actually protesting against this same violation, then the sincerity of setting up a panel is under question. All right, let's, let's bring back uh, Dr. Ikere. Uh, and I want to ask you, I want to go back to that panel 
um, inquiry and what was discussed. In a report that we watched earlier, some lawyers for the victims and those who observed it complained about the lack of questioning and um, the lack of depth to the questioning that was carried out. Uh, my question to you, uh, Doctor, is what would have been a better approach to questioning? How would that have been? And what alternatives are there for these uh, victims or representatives of the victims to express their concern about the questioning of the LCCMD uh, to the panel and have it on record? Well, when you look at the way these things are going, you know, if you want to unravel something, the kind of question you will ask will determine the kind of response you will get. So if you ask questions that are deep and critical, chances are that the person you are asking those questions will go deeper in revealing the things you are looking out for. But when you just put up the kind of question of, uh, you know, as if you are able to ask the question for the person, then it looks like you are already part of the game. You know, so the kind of question people were expecting were the, the so searching questions that will put you know, whoever you are quizzing on his or her toes, such that any attempt to want to, you know, mislead the panel will be, you know, uh, kind of uh, discouraged. So that, that has not been seen. We do see them when they get to court and how they ask their questions. We do see when they want to bring out things from uh, 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 whoever they are quizzing in the court. So how come that is not what we are seeing this time around? You know, because it, it, the kind of question that you call intelligent questions, have thought-provoking questions that escape from the, the, the truth because, it's, because it's a logical process. One question follows the other. That, that is why you, how you get to the bottom of, you know, uh, an inquiry, whatever you are getting. That is how you get to the, 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 the bottom of it. That is not where, what we are seeing. And I expected that... Uh, even those who are, that, that that will not be the process in any case. Otherwise, if, 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 the, if the lawyers and the rest of them are not, you know, getting what is expected, then let everybody be given the chance to ask questions. All right. Uh, let, yeah. let everybody be given that chance. Uh, Dr. Danik Harry and, of course, uh, Jumoke Alawode James, uh, thank you both for speaking with us uh, this morning. Um, we Thank hope, you. You know, there's more details that we can also bring you in uh, to share your thoughts on. Uh, the, uh, Thank next you so Mondays. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Thank you. Okay, and have a great day. You too. You too. Okay, um, interesting submissions there. Um, the, the, the running thread from people since this panel began was a lack of conviction that much will come out of it. And one of the questions I would have loved to put to a guest was the seeming duplication of panels we have at the state level and then we have at the federal right. level. What would the, those, what are the specific um, job for those at the federal level and what are those for the state level because it's the same incident that they are investigating are they going to go state by state to collect evidence or is the state the panels at the state level going to submit their decision to the federal panel so these are some of the things we need clarity on so we know where we are headed with this um, investigation um, a, a lot of uh people like you mentioned you know um initially we're not very sure if to trust the credibility of the panel, the capacity of the panel to carry out a, a thorough investigation and, and questioning and probing of uh, the incidents. Um, and these things that have been happening, the you know low level of questioning and probing um, raises more questions about the capacity of the panel to actually investigate. Um, people want to hear from Renu and the other members of the panel that are not from the government. Um, another thing is, um, you would expect that this is meant to be treated as a crime scene. But when the um, government initially didn't, you know, they accept that, oh, you know, anybody had died or anything had happened, it has not been treated as a crime scene. It should be cordoned off. Um, the cameras 
should not be in the possession of the LCC to date. They should be with the government um, and held in, you know, wherever they put their evidence, or evidence room or whatever. Well, they, they, at that's least where the panel you has a copy of it now. Let's hope that what is contained there, that's another thing. Um, initially, when I heard that uh, it stopped working at 8 o'clock, I was, okay, so will they be able to get enough evidence from the footage to help with the investigation? And then I realized that they started at um, 6.45. So my second worry was the lack of specifics about the timing. Is it, did it stop recording at 7.40 um, or at uh, 7.59 or at 7.30? When you say around 8 o'clock, it doesn't make sense because if you have the timestamp, uh, like you alluded to earlier, we should be able to say specifically the recording we have is from so so, -so time to so, so so time. And I mean, we, we could take I'm a little confused if this is... Um, an investigation or this is just a question and answer session because same, once, same again, once again once yeah. again those cameras immediately that place should have been seen as a crime scene those cameras should have been placed in evidence they should not be you know left with the lcc it should be um investigators forensic investigators who should i mean i expected yesterday that this shouldn't be a where the cameras what happened to them what did it capture it should be that Whatever was recorded in the cameras or until those, you know, it stopped working, it should have been played on screen yesterday. That's what I would expect if All we right. truly are seeking truth. Um, and of situation. course, she also mentioned the adjournments here and there. How long is this process going to last? Are we going to, you know, run this for the next year? Are we going to run this for the next three months? How long is it going to last? And I hope this, all, this also doesn't distract us from the conversation on police brutality and the alleged atrocities of Special Anti-Robbery Squad.